Good morning. The last time you came on CNBC was early February, which I got to tell you, it seems like a lifetime ago, to talk about your technologies and the services they provide. Since then, we've seen coronavirus become this global pandemic. Um, what has changed in terms of demand and sales of your robots? Where are they being deployed now and how do they work? So, uh, first of all, where they're being deployed, since we spoke in February, the robots, we've literally shipped hundreds of robots to Italy, uh, to Japan, to Thailand, uh, Ecuador, Spain. Really, it's a global problem. It's just beginning to hit the United States. So that's where all of the robots have been going, hundreds of them. Um, when you look at what we do, we have a xenon lamp in the inside of our robot. You can see it just behind me. That xenon lamp, when you pulse it with high power, it puts out broad spectrum germicidal light, and basically the pathogens don't have a chance. It deactivates them, including coronaviruses. Uh, in the past, we've tested against MERS and other things that are very, very similar to SARS-CoV-2, and it's had no problem killing those in about two minutes. And of course, we're talking about N95 mask disinfection and something that is so key for reuse, especially uh, in hospital settings and among some of those first responder frontline healthcare workers right now. Um, last night, the Department of Defense actually awarded a $410 million contract to another company, Battelle, uh, for disinfection of these types of respirators. Uh, there does seem to be money coming out of the Pentagon right now to help um, with the healthcare situation. Are you pursuing some of those contracts? How would you assess the ramp up in terms of government spending uh, for disinfection services? Right. So we've had a lot of conversations with both the White House, with the leaders at HHS, as well as the Department of Defense. We know that the government officials are absolutely committed to solving this problem. Mattel is a good example. That's a hydrogen peroxide based product that disinfects N95 masks in about 150 minutes. A number of our hospitals have innovated. Dr. Mark Provoznik, who's over at West Virginia, it's at uh, a hospital leader there. Uh, Baptist Health, they've been using their Xenex robots, redeploying them from disinfecting environments. They put them in a tight circle with masks around them. They've decided that they're going to do that to disinfect the masks. Um, it's, it's something that, under the circumstances, we're huge advocates in saying, let's please get enough N95 masks out. We'd like people using fresh masks. But in the interim, it's a way to drop the pathogen load and make it safer for the healthcare workers. And we want to see these healthcare workers protected. Hey, and Morris, it's, it's Dominic here. One of the things I, I remember not that long ago in the past few years, we actually took one of your robots out for a test drive here in our studios. I think you, you recall <laughs> that time. We I watched remember it. We, we talked about golf. Ab absolutely, we did. He, here's the question I have for you, and just refresh us here. What exactly is the economics behind the robot? How much does it cost if a business wants to use it? How much do they have to pay? And what exactly is the, the work-off scenario, the payback scenario for, for how one of these robots actually works? Perfect, Dominic. So literally, the robots cost $100 a day. That's what they cost. If you did 10 rooms, it's $10 a room. If you do 50 rooms, it's $2 a room. We see hospitals and other facilities easily get to 62 rooms a day. Outside of the hospital, you're going to run this thing for two minutes on each side of the bed, flipping everything in between remote controls, telephone handsets. You can see a telephone behind me, opening drawers, closing drawers. Generally, for institutions, the payback on investment is about six to one on what they're spending for the robot. So if they'll spend $100 a day, chances are they're going to get back four or $500 a day, either traditionally in hospitals by reduced infection rates, or now as we're seeing adoption in hotels, office buildings, cruise ships, that kind of thing, it's going to be back in getting confidence back in those customers who want to go back to those facilities and start traveling again and really getting America back to work again. That's our goal. Yeah, and I think you just touched on what my next question for you uh, is, and I realize that the focus right now is primarily on hospitals and healthcare facilities, but what are some of the other industries to which you are selling this technology, and how would you expect that to ramp up even as the worst of the outbreak ramps down? So, you know, we had already seen adoption within the VA hospitals, approximately 58. Just in the last three weeks, we're now up to 68 VA hospitals, 10 DOD facilities, the Texas Division of Emergency Response. They have these. Then they immediately called and said that the governor of Texas wants these in the Capitol. So we're seeing a huge demand within GSA, within government institutions. Uh, airports are calling us. 
there was an article in a, uh, a, a national newspaper a Sunday ago reviewing a, uh, a hotel chain that has decided that they need to do this to protect guests. I mean, people want to be safe. They want to demand disinfection. And this is a way for them to do it. And at $100 a day, there's really not any restriction or anything economic that prevents anybody that wants to offer a higher level of disinfection and safety to their patrons. They can now do it with this product, just like we showed Dominic. Uh, literally, Dominic, that was back in 2014. We were discussing that. Yeah. I